Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great, even though there's snow on the ground for crying out loud. Well, that's May. What, May 11th snow, just snow. for us to see the world in a different way. I love it. It's hilarious. I'm, I've got my cherry blossoms on the other side because they made it against the law in Brampton to go see the cherry blossoms. Yes. And it's uh, taking an art class, which was a breakthrough for me because I was traumatized as a seven-year-old about painting and drawing and actually going in class. I could see myself freezing and hearing the teacher. And again, it's one of those things that when we were influenced in our very young age, often between three and nine, these stay with us. They're in our cellular being. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, there are so many people that are told that they're not creative. And every person, every child is born creative. You know, through parents conditioning, teachers, you know, oh, that wasn't a good picture. And then all of a sudden, the individual stops doodling. It's a crime because everybody is absolutely creative. Absolutely. And so we, we were just chatting about uh, some people with creativity or finance or money or their sensuality have been traumatized in one way or another, and we can release it. In today's session, we're gonna release a little bit about trading or investing and, and just start some steps that may allow us to have an influence of new companies, new technology, new opportunities, which could be fun. <laughs> I'm hoping it's fun. <laughs> At the very least, I'm, I'm going to, to learn more, and I've been sort of stuck in, in, in the mold of listening to other people all the time. And, that, and that's fine, but it, it's, it's been both um, productive and harmful, I think. So I really want to acquire more knowledge in this area just for myself. And I've done all right, but I could be doing so much better. And I just want to have that relationship that you talk about, that financial Super. fitness. And it's so incredibly important. So it, it's time to start recording and, and to uh, take some, some steps. Well, fantastic. I've got a little slide here where it uh, talks about the late baby boomers, because I understand you're the, the last of the baby boomers. <laughs> the end of the baby boomers. I and don't so, insult me by saying I'm a Gen X. I'm a baby Exactly. So I'm the Gen X, and this was financial fitness that was going to be for Gen X, because I thought you were Gen X, yet I've changed it here to a late baby boomer. So it's all good. the next one we're going to go to is getting confusion and move it into clarity right and again many people are confused about the markets uh, afraid about making mistakes yet that's not what we're here to do we're actually looking to get a little clarity and perhaps even the steps to take some first actions sure. and so this is where I start off with with just asking about what types of products or services or firms you like and again, in here, this picture, this started a process in 2008 that I started with my son when he was eight years old. And I asked him as we walked around Takashimiya in Singapore, what companies he likes. And he liked that guy, Steve Jobs, with the iPad. And he liked Mickey Mouse with Disney. And he had this interest of gold and silver. So I guess I would ask you, what, like, from a fitness perspective, are there some companies in the clothing uh, angle that you like, that you enjoy, that you admire? Not really, okay. <laughs> in terms of that area. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, you know, Apple and, and Microsoft. I am, I'm a Microsoft user. I've always mm -hmm. used PC in, in business and at home. And I, I know they've done incredibly well. Um, it, Disney, you know, that's a wonderful product that, you know, even as a child and throughout my life, they're, they're, they're still very engaged in, in providing excellent products. So mm -hmm. yes, and gold, you know, my reluctance with gold goes back so far when I originally started, started getting in, involved in financial fitness uh, back around 2006 and seven. It hasn't even been that long where I started to think about stocks, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And gold, I thought, that is so high. Like that is so much money. If I was in investing, you know, one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars, I would have hardly any um, shares at all because it was so high. And yet, of course, everybody knows what happened to gold after that. Mm -hmm. So again, and we go into other sectors. Uh, 
do you use a bank? Is there a bank that you like? Do you have yes, electricity, I, hydro, gas? Uh, who do you use oh, there? Yeah, that's interesting too, right? So yeah, I mean, I have a couple of, of, of banks um, that I do use and I've used for a number of years. And, uh, you know, in Brampton, Ombridge, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the company, for sure. Yeah. You know, I've so been with that for a long time. See, what's interesting is we, we're comfortable in paying Enbridge on a monthly basis. We're happy to give our money to TD. Wouldn't it be cool to reverse it where TD would actually give us back? And right now, their dividends almost north of 6 6.5%. Enbridge right now, you can actually get them to pay you a dividend of over 5%. And so you can balance the scale here a little bit that these companies that you're using on a regular basis and paying them on a monthly basis or giving them the opportunity to hold your money, they can actually start to pay you. And how about other products or firms that you admire, uh, perhaps in, hmm, right now travel and leisure has been beaten up bad. Uh, there's the airlines, uh, hotels. Well, you know, that's a question, Dave, hmm. right? Hmm. So are some of these places going to be ultimately bankrupt? Uh, hmm. I mean, we know the airline industry industry is is very necessary, but when it comes back, will it ever be the same again? Because people are so used to being at home now, will a lot of business be done at home? So I I kind of I'm not sure. It's like well, if everything is really low and accessible to purchase now, is that the type of thing that you know you would suggest looking at? Uh, you know, from a safety standpoint, and where is the risk factor in airline? And, you know, some of the major players in the hotel market, I mean, are they going to actually survive? Absolutely. These are some of the serious questions right now. The cruise lines up to two months ago were doing so well. And then they got hammered and they got all shut down and they became the, even blamed for COVID. And when they come back, if they come back, there's some people who want to get rid of the industry, yet you see how many jobs there is there. And so this is the type of conversation, instead of going totally with fear, just be perhaps a little curious, explore it, and then you can make some decisions. I know my, my sister, she loves the cruises. In fact, she's going on, she's planned two more cruises at the end of the year. Uh, yet her as a loving cruises, wouldn't it be cool that if she could get one of her cruise lines at a 70% discount, would it not make some sense? It's almost like she can invest to get a, a free cruise because she wants to do a cruise. Yes, and I do believe people are always going to want to travel, and this is something that we're going through. I don't think it's something that's permanent. You know, there have been major viruses in the past and Super. different things that have affected the economy in the past. This is a big one, right, to respect, but people are going to come around, and we are going to travel, so I do think that that is something to, to consider for sure, and I also heard, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that there are other countries that are coming in and making some purchases in terms of uh, cruise lines. Well, that's what it's interesting. Like, I like it. This is a started question. It's, it's to just tap into your unconscious and subconscious and conscious mind to start noticing that all of these activities, firms, products, services, there's a company behind it. There's a business behind it. And so when I first put this, this together in 2008, it was really to help people become more aware as an entrepreneur, because many entrepreneurs see the opportunities before anyone else. And so this was the nurturing type of question. The next was actually the portfolio I put together for my son in 2008 with him when he was eight. He loved Apple, so we created a Yahoo Finance spreadsheet for Apple. We put some money in an account for him also for Apple. J&J, J&J, you know, all of the, the products for taking care of your health was a company that we looked at it. And at that time, it was about a 4% dividend. We liked that. A T, which is AT&T. Right now, the dividend's almost 8%. And that company is not likely to be going away. It's been around for a long time. Uh, Intel was a company, because when we looked at Apple products and we looked at the chips, I wanted him to be curious of what's inside them. And so we looked at Intel. Instead of buying gold at that time, we bought silver. And the last one we put some money in for him was uh, in Disney. And so I just updated this portfolio because I'm going to be talking to him now that he's a millennial. He's going to be doing some trading and he's enjoying the trading. But this was a flashback to 2020 and just the way that we created a diverse portfolio for him. 
And yet for you, I wanted to just give you an idea of some of the different uh, sectors, industries. Uh, for you, perhaps a pharmaceutical might be interesting. Maybe not, but that's something we'll talk about as we go forward. The next one is what stops people from investing? I think you picked up a little bit of fear of making a mistake, not knowing enough information. What else might stop people from investing? Well, they feel they don't have enough money. I think a lot of people are probably locked into to that one, thinking that they have to have, you know, the ten, the twenty thousand dollars available in order to and also the risk factor in terms of they have to have it, but then they're afraid of losing it as well, right? And when you and I first started investing way, way, way back, it was a thirty-five to fifty dollar a transaction commission. And so you needed to invest a few thousand to even get out your commissions. But today, when you have zero commissions and you have in the States, Robinhood is making it so easy for millennials to invest. In Canada, it's called uh, Wealth Trade Simple. Again, it's an app. You can actually play it almost like a video game. And it's something I'm going to invite you to check it out just for an information component. You know, your TD will allow you to do these trades. I believe there's probably still a commission. Yet Wealth Trade Simple, it's something that you can do for free. So these are things that the market is adapting and making it easier for young ones to definitely trade without commissions. And people like us can step by step, perhaps take a look and see what's available. The idea of shifting the mindset is what I, I'm really interested in. It's something I'm excited for you too, is that shifting the mindset from a consumer to being an owner of these companies. Uh, you, you, you love Microsoft. Even if you just have a few shares of Microsoft, you'll start to getting new information from Microsoft. And it might even help you for some of the businesses that you get involved with because Microsoft's constantly introducing new platforms, their Teams platform, their way of interacting. And this is something that as a consumer, it's one thing. As an investor and it, a participant and growing with that business could be a new idea of shifting consciousness. It actually does, you know, because I, I, I do have some investments and I hadn't been on them for a while. And then I went on and then all of a sudden, you know, because there has been such a dramatic shift in the, in that environment that then I became curious and it just shifted something instantly. And that was only yesterday that I did that, Dave. And then this morning when I got up, it was like, oh, I want to go and see if it shifted at all. Like the market wasn't even open yet for crying out loud. Or at least here, you know. So anyways, it, it, it definitely does shift when you have ownership in something. And it, if it can become playful, if it, not necessarily fully addictive in a negative way, just checking it out a little bit. And like what's encouraging here is it makes you take a little more responsibility and care for your financial fitness and your, your financial wellness, as opposed to putting it in a closet, closing the door and not taking any responsibility for it, which we tend to know that if your backyard, you don't decide to go and do a little nurturing, a little bit of taking away some of the weeds, you're going to have a jungle back there. Yet if you plant it, you seed it, you nurture it, you water it, guess what? You could have a beautiful garden, beautiful vegetables, beautiful flowers. That's sort of the idea here. <laughs> and then on that note, if you happen to be in my neighborhood, can you come over? Because I can't get my lawnmower to work. <laughs> so this is, this is where I really wanted to get to you with you today. And this is uh, uh, having a little discussion and discovering your universe. And if we could come up with a couple of stocks in these different areas, uh, we'll come back on a month in the, in the interim you might go on to your, your TD or on Wealth Trade Simple, and you might make one little investment or two, or you might create a portfolio. We'll take it to the next level, and I'll create a Yahoo Finance portfolio today with us and for us, and then we can look at it. Sound good? Sounds great. So if you were to pick a bank right now, and it could be TD or it could be any other Canadian bank, uh, which, which bank would you like to consider? Well, I've actually done personal banking at pretty much all the banks. Um, I would ask you then on a counter is sort of say, well, which one uh, is producing the greatest dividend or which one, or are they pretty much the same? I do have investing at TD as you've mentioned, uh, but I, I do have relationships with a couple other banks. So is there one that's better than the other? Right well, now? 
again, that's what's like, if we were to do a full analysis of the banks, and that's actually what could be done too in the due diligence component is to do a, a Google search on top Canadian banks, give them a ranking. And there is a ranking. There's a ranking based on risk. There's a banking uh, based on profitability. And so Royal Bank tends to come out number one in terms of risk and size and profitability. It's got about a 5.5% dividend. Uh, Bank of Montreal has got about a 6.6, 6.7% dividend. It's got the least exposure to the real estate industry. Uh, CIBC, their dividend went up to almost 8% recently. And they've got the most exposure, supposedly, to the state. So you're taking a little more risk. So that's where when I, I'm coaching people or talking to people about investing in one of the Canadian banks, I really don't have much of an attachment to which one you pick. I'm just encouraging it to get involved with one of them because they're all pretty much, in my reality, they're going to be around for the next decade. And if you get a relationship with them, it's a pretty high chance that in five to 10 years, the return will be beyond 9% which is a very healthy return when you combine dividends plus growth. And for parts of the last 30 years, the return has been double digits. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, we've mentioned TD and that's where I, okay. those cool. things are. So I'll, I'll put that one down. All right. And if you think speculative, like that word's an interesting word. When you hear speculative, what, where do you go to in your mind in, in, in terms of investing or, being involved in the markets well my brain just went in, in two different directions mm -hmm. so it went in to you know there's been this explosion in pot stocks and all of that and where is that going in the legalizing of of that mm -hmm. and there's a part of me that has some resistance there and a part of me that actually is pushing full on for that because of the the healing properties mm -hmm. and then the other one that came up of course was you know who's going to get to mars first and what what type of um you know a spaceship is going to be created that is you know is on somebody's drawing board right so those are the two things quite honestly that just flashed into my and mind you know, and that's great because the young ones, the, the, the millennials that I'm talking to, they like Tesla. They like Elon Musk. They like the possibilities of not only electric car, they love the battery technology. They love his, his flamboyant attitude. And so he's got SpaceX and you're investing in the modern day jobs or the modern day Einstein type of. Right. And then. They look at the stock though, it's 800 bucks. And most of them, when they're starting out, in Canada, we don't have fractional ownership. In the States, Robinhood allows young investors to get a small percentage of Tesla, mm -hmm. fractional ownership. So some of the people in Canada who are still interested in space and that, they're looking at Virgin Galactic. And that's a joint venture with Richard Branson and a Canadian entrepreneur called Chamath, who is from Waterloo, and he's, doing a lot of talk about Virgin Galactic and it's trading at about 20 bucks, but it's got a range between six and 42 in the last 52 weeks. So it's, it's allowing you to be involved. Now in your pot component, there is a Constellation Brands is a big American company that's got lots of brand. They're infusing cannabis in a lot of their drinks right now. And so this is what's fun is that I do believe that your interest in a speculative stock might require a little bit more research. And that's something we're going to leave today, unless that one of those stocks that we just talked about, you'd like to potentially say in your starter portfolio will kick off with. Um, well, you know what? I would default to the lesser cost. <laughs> so, oh, hmm. that's one of the reasons that that's one of the, reasons why people have been picking Virgin Galactic. It's like 20 bucks. So it's like to have a $200 stake in that, it's like 10 shares. You get to be involved. You can learn a lot more and you're, you're involved. <laughs> yeah, definitely that one, as opposed to $800, you know, for, for, for certain. All right. So how about out of favor? When you think out of favor right now, who do you think of as an in industries or just the, sectors that are hated right now or 
just been crushed. Well, travel, mm -hmm. airlines, cruises. Yep. Uh, I mean, there are so many industries right now that I would, I would say are out of favor. So because they're all shut down. <laughs> The big ones, the big ones would be travel, cruise, oil. Oil's been pounded. Oh, right, oil. Yeah, uh, retail. We're talking about bankruptcies a little bit. Yeah, we're getting the big names in retail bankruptcy: Macy's, um, J. Crew, a few that are really looking uh, on the verge of packing it up and getting restructured. Is there anywhere in that sector that might be of interest to you? I, you know, I really think that people are going to go back to travel. And if mm -hmm. it's something that's purchased and held for, you know, a number of years, which is sort of the plan, then I'm sort of drawn. I don't know. I, I, you, I, I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm kind of drawn for some reason to, to cruises. Um, and and oil, because, but then are we going back to oil? You know, I mean, maybe this is an opportunity where, you know. With the, uh, with the oil, I'll, I'll share this comment, is that many people in the last little while, because of Russia and, and Saudi having this war, and then the price of deliverables dropping below zero because they have to have, find a place to store it, that the, they said that the oil's gonna disappear. And I think back 30 years ago when there was a big attack on tobacco, right? Right, And the tobacco industry is still growing. It's still delivering a four, five, six percent dividend. And it's still a healthy industry from the next area that I was going to talk to you about, sin stocks. Yet, is oil really going to disappear in the next five years? Can you imagine Exxon and and Shell, now while they might have to reduce dividends, we had the horrendous oil spill with the Exxon Valdez in Alaska. It cost them billion dollars to clean it up. So are we really gonna get off of oil in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years in, in our lifetime? There might be decreases, yet that's one of the industries that's fascinating right now. If you're gonna get it at a 50, 60, 70% discount, and you have, a somewhat contrarian perspective that the greenies are strong, the green movement will grow, yet will we be getting it out of all of the industries? Not unlikely. So there's a definitely a role that it can have in a portfolio, whether you like Suncor right now, that again has high cost base in the Alberta economy and uh, Canadian National Resources is another one, both offering decent uh, dividends, yet a year ago, we would have wished to have these stocks at, that, at this price. And so, but is there anything that in, uh, interests you or a name that you're familiar with that might be out of favor right now? Air Canada would be another one to look at versus the American Airlines. It's part of the Canadian economy. It likely would be protected from the, the, uh, by the government. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Air Canada, I would stay Canadian just because that's where my heart is. And I, I think it's important right now that we do our local investing. Okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's again, we're just creating a, 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 yeah. a, a paper portfolio. How about a sin stock? And this could be tobacco. It could be your cannabis. It could be your gambling. It could be your whatever you think is else is a sin. Yeah, the... <laughs> Like again, I'm I'm split, and that's why I said it in the speculative, in a sense. Um, it, it would be it would be the pot stock. I I cannot go into like traditional tobacco, cigarettes. I just can't go there. There's just like that is, uh, yeah, that's beyond what I would want to um, have that type of relationship with. Mm -hmm. But the pot stocks, I I really think there's there's something really viable about about them, and there's also a lot of harm that can be done absolutely in many ways so it would be the sin it would be the sin stock because it is that good bad right wrong in my mind and maybe for a future talk we can compare maybe canopy 
versus Afria versus Constellation Brands, which are three different ways that pod is being used. Do you have a favorite one right now? We'll just put it into the portfolio. No, okay. I I don't have that much knowledge. I haven't done that kind All right. of research. I mean, certainly it, in terms of of pot being used uh, as a, a healing substance as opposed to a high substance, mm -hmm. uh, leaning in in that sense. But I'm also thinking as as well, and whether this is good, bad, or whatever, I'm also thinking of the probabilities in which one is is more likely to enhance my portfolio as be you know something that that doesn't okay the next one i was thinking was a dividend stock and again banks fall into that yet some of the ones that might be of interest to you would be the telephone companies like a bell canada like a telus like an embridge like a at and these are all offering sort of between four and a half to six percent and pretty stable again i mentioned bemo is one of those uh, dividend uh, guru stocks that they've just kept their dividend for 40 50 years and so the ones i just mentioned bce bell canada telus uh, at&t considered to be very uh, reliable to deliver a healthy dividend yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, certainly um, AT&T and, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and Bell. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've used Bell forever. Yeah, <clears throat> that's actually, my, my aunt was, she worked at Bell. And just by having her dividend reinvestment plan, she basically could retire. Like, that's, that's how incredible over 20, 30 years a stock like Bell can deliver a return. And again, the challenge right now or the comparison we might do would be Bell versus TELUS. TELUS is the upstart. TELUS is gonna be challenging Bell for 5G. Uh, which one you like? I'm, you're looking at someone who's got both because uh, I'm playing my odds, yet if you were to start one off, what, which one would you start off with? Actually, what was coming up is both. <laughs> there you go. I, and you really, I, I don't think you can go wrong. Exactly. Logically, they're both there. They've been around for a long time. Um, people are getting more and more attached to those systems. You know, I'm a, I'm a somebody who's opposed to 5G. You know, that's a whole other story in terms of what it's doing to us personally and mm -hmm. to our, our frequency, our human frequency. I'm very opposed um, to that. But again, it's a service that is provided in so many different levels, including the internet that I'm using to speak with you today. So it's not going away anytime soon. All right. So we, we're doing really good. Let me just uh, see if I can continue with one more for you here. And that's a, a consumer or a technology or a commodity, uh, something that you are interested in. Any, uh, any other company in the world that you might want to have in your portfolio? <laughs> oh gosh you know part of my challenge is i've been so separate from thinking this way mm. right so well the thing that you mentioned earlier you're a microsoft user so microsoft or uh, apple or amazon or google these are okay. the mega stocks and they're the ones who who have the best balance sheets right now they're the most popular stocks in the world would you like one of those in your portfolio? Well, you know, my brain goes to, well, first of all, it went to electric cars for some mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. when the technology where I hope it's technology is going. So it did go to that. Um, and when you mentioned Google and Amazon, obviously, but I, then I, my brain goes to this other place, Dev, it's, it, Dave, it says that it's Deb, um, it's already too high. It's out of your reach. And they've done so incredibly well. I mean, Amazon, my goodness, since COVID, uh, you know, they're going to want COVID to remain forever mm -hmm. in terms of how well the company is done. So, so my brain goes to that. Like it's, it's already so much. Are they providing an ongoing dividend or, you know, what are they doing? Or do I want to go into a stock that is, I don't know how much it is. Maybe mm -hmm. you, have an idea 
about two thousand dollars a share yeah exactly See, but the funny thing is is they're still growing their top line sales by 25 percent that's what's shocking about amazon because amazon's actually grown over the last five to ten years without necessarily being worried about profitability because they've been growing the top line and they've created now such a incredible delivering system a web services business and so that's the that's part of the the brilliance of bezos but also the scary part if you're a retailer because he is just part of the devastation of the industry that still has billions and billions and billions of dollars to destroy and so that's one of the things about amazon google in in search and in youtube and the way that they're using technology apple in the way that they've created an ecosystem so as an entrepreneur as a business person owning one of these stocks and then analyzing or at least studying a little bit about how they continue to grow would probably be a really cool investment. <laughs> well, 2000, you know, if I'm actually investing $2,000 a stock seems like uh, that's pretty high, high. Um, then again, it may be likely that maybe it'll go to four. Who knows, right? Correct. That's, that's the crazy thing because I do Correct. believe it will continue to literally eat at, up and devastate a number of of businesses along the way. At a at a thousand, people were saying it was overvalued. At fifteen hundred, people were saying it overvalued. At eighteen hundred, people said it was overvalued. And this is the interesting component: is that is it continuing to grow? And this is the analysis, which would be useful. Maybe we'll do that in, in a future month too is we'll see, actually we'll do an, an analysis, we'll break it down into its components. Yet what's really valuable, again, as a, as a curious entrepreneur is, what are they doing that's so amazing? And again, what they're doing is infusing the technology, infusing the highest level of service. I don't know, if have you bought anything from Amazon lately? Yes, actually, I'm waiting for two different items to come. You know, and, they simplified everything. Though I'm and, not lately, it's a little bit longer to get here. Well, that's the funny thing is that often they will say, they'll give a 14-day a delivery if you're deciding not to use the Prime, and they'll deliver it after eight days. Is that their exceeding expectations is pretty legendary. Yes, and I have something that I know is shipped, and actually it was supposed to be here today. So there could be something on my front step as we speak. In All fact, right. A book that I ordered. So, so let's just finish. Is there, is there one of those stocks that I know it's, it's a stretch from a perspective of, of buying a $2,000 stock, it could go down so much. Yet that's the, the beautiful thing about some of these stocks is that they continue to show very strong results. Yeah, you know, I think I would watch it. I know myself right now, I wouldn't buy it. Okay. But it would be very interesting to watch it. What is the, what's Google? Google, I believe is about 1400. So both of them, both of them are, are definite, um, they're, they're stocks that play on, this is why, again, why it's been so effective for Robinhood in the States is you don't need to buy a full $2,000 stock is that they actually allow young people particularly to take uh, marginal or fractional shares. And so Google... You know, it just reminds me so much of the real estate market where it was like, oh, it's capped at, you know, a $500,000 home here in Toronto. Oh, it's capped at, you know, seven fifty. dollars Oh, now we got million, million five, two million. You know, like, you know how do you know where that is and, and so, how so, high can it go, you know? So, but it, I mean, there is some reluctance, obviously, with, with those types of, of numbers, given what I have to, that I want to put aside and, and invest in. I'm looking, what are some lower, um, lower numbers? I mean, I would watch those just because it's so interesting. But okay, so Am Amazon's around 2000, Google's at 1400, and Apple's around 300. And so, and it's actually been one of the big discussions that Warren Buffett's talked about over the years is, the price of the shares shouldn't affect the investor, yet it certainly does. As a small investor, putting 2,000 US into Amazon is a, a sizable investment. Mm -hmm. Putting 1,400 into Google is a sizable investment. Apple used to trade around 30 to $60. It's now at $300. So there are definitely some investors who just can't find the quantum or the, 
the investment size to suit their budget. Yeah, and I think so. You know, that that cautious side of me goes into well, I would rather invest in you know numbers that then if they do go down, then there's less impact, right? So some of the smaller stocks, 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars, well, if they get cut in half, yes, you still lose half, but you lose less, a lot less than if a 2000 or 1400 stock all of a sudden goes down 25%, right? Right. Okay, so is there a commodity or a consumer's goods product that you might consider? Well, I mean, in with in terms of, are, are you separating technology now or? Well, basically my last little slide here was looking at picking a technology or a consumer or a commodity, or for you, there could be even something related to the pharmaceuticals. A Gilead is an example, or an Advi. These are pharmaceutical companies that are part of the COVID uh, attack team. And uh, again, an, an industry that has definitely shown some strong returns in the last couple of years. Yeah, and that one, you know, that almost, be careful what I say here, right? That almost goes into a sin stock to me in a mm -hmm. sense, because I'm not somebody who really would promote uh, vaccination yes. and mm -hmm. a lot of taking uh, pharmaceuticals. Yes. Um, just because of my beliefs. Yes. So I would struggle with those ones, even though I see that they're going to make they're going to make money mm -hmm. uh, because they're going to sell an awful lot of vaccinations. Mm -hmm. I would say out of, in, in, I would say in terms of what we've discussed that probably the, the Apple. Okay. Let's know, put, let's put Apple into your portfolio then. All right. And because I'm also very curious about that as well. They've come out with so many different, you know, products over time. And so the next step would be, Again, what we're going to do to accelerate today's session, I, I'll, I'll put this into a, a Yahoo Finance spreadsheet for you and, and then sh send that to you and allow that, us to talk a little bit. But I think what, if what I'm hearing is if it's Apple and then it's Bell Canada, and we're going to do Bell Canada and TELUS, and then we're going to skip on the SIN today, yet we're going to pick Air Canada, Virgin Galactic, and TD as your starter portfolio. Okay. I'll, put a, I'll put it in as about a $15,000 portfolio, which will be, again, a, a process that uh, allows you to see it, experience it. And then in the next little while, we'll look for ways to put it into uh, whether you want to do it with well, simple trade or you want to do it with TD, whether you want to start with a $1,500 starting investment or a $500 starting investment. Yet it's something that you will be able to see where it is today and where it could go in the weeks and months ahead. How does that sound? Sounds great. All right, well, this was a little type of analysis that we'll do in future shows, just between Bank of Montreal and RBC. And the big thing to highlight here is the 52 week range for BMO, it was 55 to 104, and today it's at 67. And for RBC, it's a 50, 72 to 109, and it's at 84. The dividend for BMO is 6.3 and the dividend for Royal is 5.1. And so when you compare that to what they're paying for our deposits in the account, that's why a lot of investors right now are finding dividend shares, particularly in the banks, are a great thing. It's very interesting. All right. So let's just see. Next little thing, slide would be so the, the process that we've followed here is what firms do you admire, and then what stops people to invest, shifting the mindset, discovering your universe, doing a little bit of analysis and also diversification putting it onto a Yahoo Finance spreadsheet, and then setting up a trade account, which you've done. Congratulations, that's what we've done since the last time we, we really talked that you set up and you're now more aware of what you can do with TD. I'm gonna yeah, invite I you to- went in, I went in and, and I put, and, and help me with the terminology, right? 
mm. uh, like the cost, the possible buying. So if the stock dips down to this, mm. then I have some purchase orders sitting there. Oh, super. Yes. So that's again, creating your portfolio. You can do it on the TD platform. You can take a look at maybe you want to download the app for wealth, simple trade as an example. Uh, another one that is, again, we could do an analysis in the future of quest trade. And for our American friends, uh, Robin hood is really done well with millennials. And then step eight is put some money in or not. It's your choice. And that's sort of the process I wanted to walk us through today. That's great. Is that useful? It. You know, I'm the type of person that um, when I'm interested in something, I often jump, jump very quickly and get engaged and do it. But in finance, I've had this, you know, I've done it in the past. I've been burned sometimes in the past, you know, a little reluctance. And yet I really feel that with, um, with the support, you know, yourself and a friend of mine who's done trading forever. And she's like, why don't you just like do it, <laughs> you know, in a sense, like, what are you waiting for? And then with your support and, and, and the coaching and seeing the slides, it, it, it's sinking in at a, at a different level. And I'm starting to feel more curious and um, getting towards a little bit more educated as, as well, as opposed to taking that money and taking it to somebody at the bank and then they invest it. And then, uh, I mean, really, <laughs> thanks for well, that. That's again, one of the things that people who say I want to use exchange traded funds and that I do actually encourage them to put a little bit in there because that may be a little bit of the financial security that is so important. What we're looking at on this side is a little bit more of the financial flexibility, financial variability with ownership, yet also really mitigating the risk and being comfortable that no matter what you buy, that if it goes down another 20, 30 percent, just because the market gets emotional, actually have the confidence that's where you make one even buy more exactly i was when i was speaking to my friend last night and i said oh this one is actually saying sell and she said put in a uh, an order to buy then <laughs> yeah the, contrari was, so dip, the yeah. contrarian view tends to work if you've done a little bit of analysis you know the risk and that's why i'm encouraging you to really develop that relationship with five or six stocks that it's just not a, a quick transaction no with TD, you're using them, you're, you're, you're going to probably have a relationship with them for the next 10 years. And you'll see that even their stock trades in about a $30, $40 range per year. Wouldn't it be nice even once or twice a year that you pick up some when it's out of favor and you might even sell a little bit when it's really, really hot. And that way you develop the relationship where you're doing both investing and trading with these stocks. And so that would be the way that I'd bring the session to a bit of a close. Unless you have another question, we'll, we'll bring it to a close. And I thank you for being our example of the late baby boomer investor. <laughs> exactly. Now, listen, I appreciate you uh, taking, taking the time and I'm curious to, to see that and, and watch that and getting a little bit more engaged. And it really doesn't take a lot of effort to just, as I found out yesterday, again, going back on there. So um, I think it's, I think it's important that, that people take responsibility for their financial fitness. Absolutely. Well, thank you so very much. You're very welcome. And I was, since I'm the one recording, I was waiting for you to, to say, okay, well, goodbye. But I have to actually say, um, thank you so much. Discuss for Deb, and it is listed here. We're gonna start off with Microsoft. And Microsoft, we would then follow with Apple, and then AT&T, Bell Canada, a cannabis ETF, HMMJ.TO, Air Canada, there would be SPCA, Virgin Galactic, and TD. If we put approximately $2,000 in each of their shareholdings, it would be a portfolio of $16,654. And we'll follow up in the weeks ahead to see how Deb selects and starts putting some cash aside in this late baby boomer portfolio. Thank you so much. Wishing you ahead. And again, once more, add a like, a comment, or subscribe. And thank you very much.